Have you ever received an email from an alleged Nigerian prince just dying to share his wealth with you? Or a shady pop-up window asking you to scan your Mac because you're in danger? You have seen phishing attacks. How cyber criminals use email phishing attacks. Having a profile on the internet comes with risks. We all get phishing emails. Phishing is one of the most popular and most effective ways that hackers gain access to sensitive data. It's called phishing, and I'm here to tell you how bad it can actually get. Bring out the encyclopedia. Phishing is when a person with malicious intent sends out fake messages and emails in hopes of getting your sensitive information, like your passwords or bank credentials. It's called phishing because the message is the bait, the link is the hook, and you're the catch. Phishing is a part of social engineering, and the criminal usually uses seduction tactics like reclaim your prize, or fear tactics like your account has been blocked, something like that. The scammer will usually pose as a legitimate business or your service provider, like your bank, credit company, streaming service, or your preferred payment app. You name it, it's going to be anything you would trust. I've received some phishing emails myself, but I'm more interested in you guys. Have you ever been phished? Share it in the comments and I'll gladly read about it. At the end of those fake emails will be an innocent link, a teeny tiny URL that can do all sorts of nasty things to your system when you click on it. Imagine you clicked on the damn link and were redirected to a website that looked exactly like your Facebook login page. You entered your credentials to verify your account and moved on with your day. But you just unknowingly gave access to your Facebook account to a random douchebag. Or worse, your computer is now being used as a part of a botnet. Or even worse, the hacker can now record you through your webcam. So phishing basically proves that we're always one click away from potential self-destruction. That's why I think it would be nice to discuss how to actually protect yourself from phishing. An easy first step is to check URLs before clicking them. Make it your new habit. Hover over the link you're about to click on, and if the address link doesn't match, then it's probably a phishing link. It's the same as if your taxi driver says he's going to take you home while driving in the opposite direction. What? You're going the wrong way! Where are we going? I'm taking you home. This is not the way to my fucking house, Kurt! You can try checking suspicious URLs at sites like virustotal.com, but just remember that this is not a 100% reliable way to know if the site is truly safe. But let's say you clicked on the link. Oh, man. Well, now you're going to have to verify the site's security. Take out your magnifying glasses and look for spelling mistakes. Check if the domain address matches the one you're looking for. Also look for trust seals like the padlock, which basically tells you that the website is encrypted. Another major red flag is if you see a stupid amount of pop-up ads. And finally, pay attention to how often you get redirected out of the page you're visiting. If it happens a lot, it's a red flag. Oh, and if a suspicious website in any form asks you to enter your credentials, personal, financial information, or email address, that's a huge red flag. Now let's talk about the software you're using. Hackers exploit holes in outdated systems. They find new ways how to go around security protocols and new ways to abuse old systems. An example, if I may. Time, 2020, and it's the 5th of February. Place, the city of Oldsmar, Florida. An employee of a water treatment plant visits a malicious website. A few hours later, an unknown user gains unauthorized access to one of the facility systems. The malicious actor raises the concentration level of a chemical that's used to clean the water to a fatal level. Fortunately, the plant manager notices the changes and the poisoned water doesn't actually reach the public, but the criminal gets away. The FBI starts an investigation and finds how the criminal got into the system in the first place. Weak passwords and an outdated Windows 7. So I think this just shows how important it is to update any and every piece of software you have. And just forget about Windows 7. Let it go, okay? Let it go. Yeah, let it go, let it go. What about antivirus software? Does it help against phishing? Good question. The answer is yes. Surfing the web means constantly downloading temporary data to your device. 
If you pressed on a phishing link, some of that definitely is malware and it might have been downloaded to your device. So in order to stay safe, you need to scan your computer with antivirus, like Surfshark. Wait, was that a product placement? <laughs> Another solution would be having a hound dog, letting you know when trouble is afoot. And by hound dog, I mean installing an anti-phishing add-on. There are different types of toolbars doing different things, like showing the info about a web or checking the history of phishing attacks on the site. But basically, all of them fulfill the same function. They check the emails and web pages, if they're safe to enter, and check before it's too late. Surfshark's clean web feature can also be helpful by detecting and blocking malicious ads. It's a good start. And probably the most important defense against an attack is knowledge. How to avoid a situation of conflict? By not being there in the first place. Knowing what to avoid seems like the best defense. So stay informed. A Jedi uses the force. There are new ways invented every moment to extort you out of your personal data and belongings. So subscribe to us and exercise caution through intelligence. Brain is a muscle. This is all muscle. So I am covered in brains and I have more brains than you. Be safe, smart, and subscribe, please.